Bob, how's it going? Oh, good, Kerry. I don't know how it could be any hotter, though. Well, it's getting a little pretty warm. Well, stop by Ground Sport on your way in to uh, eat. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. When you climb up into the seat of a piece of heavy equipment like this, it's easy to get the feeling that you're invincible. You may feel that most of the hazards faced by the crews that are battling the fire on the ground won't affect you. In fact, I've seen some pretty terrific work by you folks out there, and you do a terrific job in all sorts of terrain and conditions. But there may come a time when you find yourself trapped while fighting a fire on a dozer. Don't panic. You do have options. This program will help you to evaluate the options that are available to you in an entrapment situation and provide the means to make safe, quick decisions for an escape. During an entrapment episode, your options may be governed by several factors, such as the extent of your dozer operating experience, the type of terrain you may find yourself in, the type of fuel and the extent of the fuel load, as well as weather conditions. The options available to you will also be governed by the mobility of your dozer and the type of safety equipment carried on the dozer, as well as what kind of personal safety equipment you may have as an operator. Also, you may not only have to worry about your own safety, but the safety of other personnel and equipment near you. Of course, the most significant factor which will affect what actions you take is the operational status of your dozer. Is it broke down? Is it hung up? Is it stuck? The type of personal protection that you have will also determine what action you might take. It's recommended that the dozer operator wear at least three layers of loose-fitting clothing, and the outer layer must be made of a fire-resistant material. Also, he should have a neck shroud, OSHA-approved boots and gloves, and an air-filtered radio-equipped helmet. Not only should the operator be equipped with safety items, but any dozer in wildfire suppression should have fire curtains, a lighting package, ROPS and seat belt, canteens of water, and a basic first aid kit. It should also be equipped with communication devices, a fire extinguisher, flashlight, a fire blanket, some fusees or other fire source such as a drip torch or very pistol. It should also have a fire or tent shelter for each person on the dozer, some hand tools such as a Pulaski or shovel, an emergency air supply or SCBA, and a burn kit. Only dozers equipped with hydraulically operated blades should be used to fight wildland fire. But in reality, whatever is available will be used. So you need to make sure that the dozer you will be using is properly equipped with the safety items just described. It is not only important to have all the safety items on the dozer and on yourself, but that you know how to use them. So the more knowledge you have, not only in fire behavior, but in the use of the proper safety equipment, the better your chances are in effecting a safe escape from an entrapment situation. If you become trapped on a dozer, your actions and reactions depend on time. Do you have time to remove all personnel to a safer area? Do you have time to construct a safety island? Do you have time to safely burn out around the equipment? Do you have time to construct a trench? Do you have time to get into your fire or tent shelter or get your SCBA off the dozer? If your dozer is operable and you have safety equipment, then there are more options available in the time that you have. These are the procedures that you should take. Make a quick size up to determine how much time you do have. Then advise your supervisor of your problem and location. If at all possible, stay on the dozer. Drop the fire curtain on the hottest side and keep the dozer moving and enlarging your safety area. If there is time, and it can be done safely, fire out around your dozer. Remember, a wildfire will usually not hit you as a solid wall, but will come in fingers or gusts. If you keep moving, you can jockey for the best position and ride it out. But if your dozer is inoperative, or you decide to park it and use a shelter, then you need to consider implementing the following procedures. Get out of there and make yourself, get yourself in a safe spot. Above all, communicate. Let someone know you have a problem and where you are located. Then, determine if all personnel with the dozer can possibly be evacuated safely before the dozer is overrun. 
But if you and any others will be trapped with the dozer, you can fire out around and under the dozer if there is time and if it is safe to do so. Position yourself in a fire or tin shelter in the area away from the greatest source of heat. Use the dozer as a heat shield if you can. If possible, place the dozer facing the fire in a short trench and pile dirt between you and the fire. Leave the dozer running at least at fast idle, about one-third throttle, with the brakes locked and with the blade and any rippers lowered to the ground. Even though you will have more protection in a trench under a dozer, you should be aware that if the fire is hot enough and you have a hydraulically operated dozer, the hydraulic lines could rupture or the batteries could explode, dripping hot liquid into the area under the dozer. But in most cases, the hydraulic lines will not rupture if the fire is not too intense and the dozer will not be exposed for a prolonged period of time. Any time you are trapped with fire breathing down on you, it is to your advantage to make a calm, quick evaluation of your situation. And if you're trapped when you're on your dozer, there are several options available. Remember, quickly evaluate all the factors. Keep in mind the 10 standard firefighting orders and the 18 situations that shout watch out. And don't forget LCES, lookouts, communication, escape routes, and safety zones. Make your decision. And above all, don't panic.